Kong, thank you very much. Um, is it working like this? Perfect. So, uh, thanks for having me here. My name is Konrad. Um, I work for Gestigon. We are, or have been, a small uh, German startup uh, located in Lübeck near Hamburg, mm -hmm. and we do um, behavior tracking and gesture control. Uh, we were recently acquired by the uh, Valeo Automotive Group and now shifting our activities into the automotive context, but still doing activities in AR, VR, and mixed reality. So, perfect. Thank you. So, today I want to talk to you about uh, what we uh, learned from um, integrating our uh, touchless interaction into VR, AR, and then uh, the transition to mixed reality systems. First of all, I want to start with um, what's important for me for a mixed reality system. First of all, um, that's um, crucial for me is the see-through display with a high transparency. We, there are some devices out there that have uh, like dim shuttered uh, displays and you can't, can barely see what's in your room. and um, when I can't see the chair, there's no point uh, of uh, sitting, a sitting a virtual person on that chair, because uh, then it uh, won't, won't mix up and it won't make any sense. When I, um, then this object needs to be fixed in place. So there are some headsets out there that have, have built-in IMUs, and yes, it works somehow when I rotate my head that the object that I'm placing into the room um, stays where it is, but um, it's floating and it doesn't really feel like it's stick to the uh, stick to the position and that comes to the last point that positional tracking is actually very important because otherwise we only have an AR headset so we have just augmented content and uh, we want objects that we place in the room be stay there and it doesn't matter if I go to it or uh, go away from it when we talk about interaction there are mainly three different types that I want to mention here. So one is superpowers. We are here all for superpowers, and um, VR and AR gives us the opportunity um, to enable ourselves with abilities that we do not have in the, in the real world. So if the bottle is over here, and I'm standing away from it, why, sh why should I go there and grab it when I can just use a fork and uh, simply uh, let it let it fly into my hand, and there are a bunch of um, we can manipulate large and heavy objects, and we can uh, have strength that we do not have in the real world. But also, um, direct uh, physical manipulation is uh, as as important. We want to uh, the interaction with objects uh, to be as natural as possible, and. If I have a bottle in my hand, I just want to grab it with my hand. I can want to hand it over. Better? Okay. I want to hand it over to um, my other hand, which is not, not free anymore, but yeah, still works somehow. Um, so physics uh, manipulation, I want to touch objects. I want to uh, have the feeling that the object reacts to uh, my, my uh, touching or grabbing. UI interaction is uh, something uh, I wasn't really sure if that's really needed, but uh, the more we develop for um, VR, AR, and MR, um, the more I see the need that uh, interacting with physics objects in the scene is not necessarily enough to uh, have an experience that um, gives us en enough um, opportunities to uh, work in a productive environment. So for the industry, it's very important to um, have a large functionality inside of the scenes, and that's why we um, think about interaction concepts with UI elements. So how do we actually interact with UI elements? How does a menu look in, uh, in mixed reality or virtual reality? Um, how do we browse through large amounts of data, and how do we press a button, is it a giant box that is uh, in front of us hovering and uh, waiting for me to, to touch it? Probably not. Maybe we don't need any buttons. Current solution for interaction, we all know 
gaze and click. So that works pretty good. So I can just look where I want to interact. We all know uh, everybody who wore the uh, um, HoloLens once knows how to interact. Um, but the clicking is for me a little bit of a problem. Uh, clicking with my hand is just, uh, there's no connection between what I'm actually interacting with and, uh, and my actual action with the hand. So if I want to move the bottle from here, I like the bottle, so by the way, um, I want to move the bottle from here to here. I can look at it, click, look over there, release again, but what I actually want is simply grabbing it. Controllers is another solution. Okay, most of them here are VR controllers. I also brought uh, the Vive controller. Everybody knows it. And controllers are great because they give you haptic feedback somehow. But um, my problem with it is when I want to open a door, I want to grab the door handle and open it and not press any button like the trigger or whatever. It's just a layer, an unnecessary layer for, for interaction. And um, that's why our solution is based on uh, 3D data. So we do hand feature tracking, gesture recognition, and we have a very natural hand visualization. And that is uh, very crucial for um, actually yeah, displaying the, the, the hand as natural as possible. So when we uh, think about hand features, what, what can we actually track? We do not uh, track the whole hand skeleton because uh, we want to uh, be very fast, low latency, and also uh, run on um, mobile devices and on embedded platforms. We concentrated on the position of the hand, the hand rotation, the openness that can be implemented for um, grabbing gestures, grabbing and releasing, and the handedness, of course, left, right hand. And the uh, most important one might be the fingertip positions because the fingers are what we're actually grabbing with. When I want to grab my bottle, um, I do not need my wrist for that. I just need my fingertips. And uh, so we can make use of the f entire field of view of the sensor, although my hand might uh, partly not be visible to the sensor. But if my fingers are visible, I can still grab. You might say, okay, grabbing is nice, but I want uh, natural inter interaction and I want hold some, to hold something in my hand and uh, pass it over to the other hand. Well, we got it covered th there as well. Um, we uh, have an algorithm that uh, calculates the dis distribution of collider elements inside the volume that we are tracking to make uh, it possible to use everything that the sensor sees, uh, a physical element inside of whatever if it's Unity or if it's Unreal or whatever. Gestures is, of course, very important because it en enables us to um, switch between modes, open up menus, and, yeah, apply some kind of force. Um, so just to mention a few of those, swipe is a no-brainer, swipe in every four directions, rotation, this can be with the, with the entire hand, but or also with the just, just a finger. Push could also be a punch with the fist, or also with the open hand. The V gesture, that's um, why I chose the image, can be like this one, but also the live long prosper gesture. And the uh, clamp gesture that we uh, like a lot, because it's um, very easy to learn, and the user gives uh, himself a haptic feedback. We have a definite start of the gesture and we have a definite end of the gesture. And the uh, user touches his own fingers. And this is very good trackable and uh, we like to use it very much. Hand visual visualization is very important for VR. So um, the user has to see his own hand and not an artificial hand model. That's why we uh, do not use the hand skeleton approach and uh, show an artificial hand, but we use the uh, raw point cloud data that comes from the 3D sensor, rendered in real time at the 3D mesh, and then colorize this mesh with the amplitude data that comes from the sensor. So what you see on the right side of the picture is not a, um, an artificial hand, but actually a 3D mesh 
that is rendered 60, uh, 60 FPS. And uh, any, anything that you wear, like my, my uh, bracelet or a watch or a ring, would also be visualized and you would instantly know this is my hand and not an artificial one. But we are here to talk about um, MR, not VR. Why um, is the visualization of the hands also so important for mixed reality? Well, um, for, for MR we don't need a visualization of the hand, but we need the information about it. So what we actually want is that we can bring our hand between the virtual object and the display. Because when I have a virtual bottle in the room and I want to grab it, my hand needs to occlude the object. And uh, if you have experienced uh, like a hologram app and you bring your hand in front of you, it is behind the, behind the object and it just does, doesn't feel natural because the hand is in this moment not part of the experience, but it should be. So what we can do is take the mesh that we calculate for VR, um, bring up a shader that is unlit black. There are occlusion shaders also coming with the Unity engine. And we can just simply cut out our hand of the um, actual rendering. And that brings us to the, uh, the right part of the image that our hand is, you can bring the hand in front of the actual object. Very important for this is the calibration. So the sensor needs uh, to be integrated into the headset. We had some um, tries with um, 3D printing mounts for sensors and connecting it to the HoloLens or the Epson Movirio or the ODG glasses and uh, try to get the calibration right. But the, if it's just a little loose, it's not going to work. And also the software calibration needs to be very, very accurate. So every, every 3D sensor has some kind of distortion. You need to calculate that out because uh, the tracked fingertip needs to be at the perfect position where your actual fingertip is. Otherwise, you have just a shadow that is following you and it won't, won't be um, as good as it could be. Another point is that um, that's from a Microsoft Best Practice Guide that uh, many headsets have, most headsets have a fixed focal plane. And that means when you, want to, when you bring a uh, virtual object uh, at a distance of half a meter and you want to display it sharp, the, the eye has to focus on a plane that is far beyond that. Well, not, it, it, it works somehow. You can, you can see this object sharp, but in uh, the moment where you want to um, focus on the virtual object and your real hand, it, uh, there's a mismatch. You can, uh, it looks like they are in the same distance, but they aren't because you have to focus for the virtual object at uh, one meter 80 or something and for your hand at 50 centimeters and you can't bring that both sharp at the same time. Ed Tang from Evergent had a really uh, impressive presentation on Wednesday on how Lightfield can solve this problem and it's, um, I'm curious about how good that actually works once we have our technology applied to it. So the prototypes really look amazing. The other one is marketing. So the pictures that we see in every presentation look like this. There's a guy leaning onto a table and there's a giant virtual object in front of him. But the reality is a little bit more like this. This is what he actually sees. So how can this work? It's, it won't be an immersive experience when the field of view is so limited. And uh, this works for content that is far away from us. So when we project something like a TV or a Skype window on a, on, on, a, on a wall that is two or three meters away from us, not a problem. But um, here you also see the uh, field of view visualization. So what you see in the uh, red rectangle is uh, the field of view of the whole lens visualized. And you, would, you can say, well, that's my whole living room. That, that's sufficient for me. Well, but now you're standing five meters away from it. And uh, at the point that we want to bring uh, an object so close that we can actually touch it, we end up at a size of a notepad. And 
well, you can say, well, this is still efficient for me, but now we need to bring our hands also into this interaction space. And we had to end up that the virtual objects that we want to interact with have the size of a ping pong ball. This is not what we want. We want to interact with everything that is virtual in the environment. So uh, to sum up the requirements, we need, to, uh, need the sensor to be fixed to the HMD. We need a, a very good alignment for, from the track data to the real hand. Um, and we need high speed, low latency, so good processing power. And uh, the light field technology to solve the focusing problem and a larger field of view to just enable it to interact with something that is bigger than a ping pong ball. So as a conclusion, I can say natural interaction in mixed reality is possible now. The technology is there. We have the tracking possibilities. We have light field technology. Um, the only thing that might ha have to be solved is the larger field of view. Now it is uh, on us to merge our technologies together to make it possible to interact in the most natural way possible. Thank you very much.